Greetings Acolytes of the Force and welcome back to the Archives. Today we're bringing you another discussion video. This one we're going to be highlighting and targeting Mace Windu. On the channel before, we ourselves have been pretty harsh on Windu, mostly his conduct with how he treats Anakin and those around him, and sometimes his general conduct just as a Jedi. He makes what a lot of fans would consider to be questionable choices, one of which being deciding to execute Palpatine uh, after discovering just how powerful and deadly he was as a Sith Lord. But the biggest critique that Mace Windu gets is obviously his treatment of Anakin. Um, before on the channel, we've been super harsh on Windu. We've highlighted various points where Windu could have handled things more gently and perhaps could have had a more desirable outcome. But today we wanted to act as his attorney, so to speak. Come to his defense, uh, break down why me and the archivist who's joining us again today, why Mace Windu may not be the perfect um, Jedi in terms of his relationship with Anakin, but overall, he's a very, very solid Jedi Master, one of the smartest Jedi Masters of the era, and in a lot of ways, misunderstood. And now being able to look at the story of Star Wars, of Anakin and Windu's relationship in hindsight, I think that if we look at this, without our bias and without the idea that we're following Anakin as our protagonist, that Mace Windu really didn't do all that wrong and really was a solid Jedi Master and one of the best of the time. So we want to get into that. Again, welcome the Archivist back to the channel. Hey, always thanks for having me. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So overall, our brief thoughts about Mace Windu. A few things about Windu that the novelization for Revenge of the Sith really hammers home. That is that Windu cares about the Jedi Order and the Republic more than anything else. He cares about those things more than his personal relationships. He, carry, he cares about mm -hmm. those things even more than how he is perceived uh, through other Jedi. He adheres to his morals and his code and his love of the Republic more than anything. In fact, there's a part in the novelization for Revenge of the Sith that I've always loved. And that's when I believe it's from Obi-Wan's point of view, uh, where he's talking about how Anakin loves people and Anakin has those connections. And although Windu lacks that um, personal relationship with individuals, he doesn't lack that at all with his stance on the Republic. The Republic is essentially... Um, Mace Windu's friends, his family, his foundation. And while Anakin is loyal to people, Mace Windu is loyal to ideals and the function and prosperity of a galaxy. If the galaxy itself is prosperous and the galaxy itself is being put in the most beneficial way possible, that is the course that Mace Windu is all for. And when you look at it from that perspective, how can you really condemn this man as a villain in some circles. I, I think it's impossible. What are sort of your thoughts on Windu as a character and how he's perceived versus the reality of the situation? I think he exemplifies everything that the Jedi want to be. And especially by the time of the Republic classic era, um, he is on the Jedi Council around the time when the Jedi have solidified themselves as the peacekeepers were just coming out of uh, the High Republic era where, you know, they were pretty much perfect. Um, and they're, you know, even though the Sith are far removed by this point, they still have that responsibility of making sure the Republic stays safe and secure. And Windu is the kind of Jedi that represents that lawful aspect of their order, if you know what I mean. Um, when George was designing the Jedi, he had two specific influences in mind. One of those was the samurai, and the second was the way that Wild West marshals in uh, Western movies would kind of show up, lay down the law, you know, with their uh, uh, iron on their hip and everything. And I think Windu is definitely that part of it. He's definitely that Wild West marshal ready to uh, defend the law at any cost at any point in time. And instill order. Mm -hmm. um, he's, an, he's an agent of order. Um, and like I said, I, 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 prosperity. The, these are things that Mace Windu supports above all else. He adheres completely to the Jedi Code, um, but he probably loves the Republic more than even the Jedi Order. And yeah. similarly to Dooku, even though they find great disillusionment 
with the Senate and specifically how intertwined the Senate and the Jedi become, they still love the Republic. And in a lot of ways, that's why Windu respects Dooku so much, because he sees a lot of the flaws uh, in the Republic that Dooku sees. But unlike Dooku, Mace Windu makes all the right decisions. He stands by the Republic. He stands by the Jedi Order. He attempts to correct them in ways that Palpatine and Anakin will, would criticize, when in reality, they all have very similar you know, thoughts. They know that the galaxy is corrupt and that you know, again, with the the, the Senate's corrupt, but instead of giving in and diving into more corruption, Mace Windu's resolve is to solve it the just way, the lawful way. And it's interesting that because the way Star Wars is framed, because Anakin is our protagonist, we're naturally inclined to side more with his plight. When in reality, if you looked at things objectively, Anakin is out of line a lot. He doesn't listen to what the Jedi Council wants. He doesn't uh, respect authority. And in Mace Windu's mind, why would you give someone power over something that they don't respect or even believe that they should be forced to adhere to? That just seems dangerous. Yeah, I like that a lot. We keep talking about how Mace has this big, um, you know, idealistic crusade for the republic and that's because in the revenge of the sith novel it gives us an insight into his mind and it says that secretly um and I'm, you know this is pretty much verbatim from the book mace windu does have an attachment he has a love for the republic and the reason is is you know the jedi are always taught to defend peace and in mace windu's mind he says that peace resides in civilization but to him, civilization only has one name, which is the Republic. Um, and there's this really dramatic passage, the moment that he learns that Palpatine is the Sith Lord they've been looking for. He's kind of having this um, internal breakdown as he's realizing everything that they've been fighting for has been for nothing. Um, it says, he has given his life in service of his love, the Republic. He has taken lives in its service and lost the lives of innocence. He has seen beings that he cares for maimed and killed and sometimes worse, sometimes so broken by the horror of the struggle that their only answer was to commit greater horrors still. And of course, that's referencing some Jedi that have fallen to the dark side, such as Depa Balaba, his own apprentice. All of these things he has endured because he wants to keep the peace and sanctity of the Republic. Yeah, uh, and and it's interesting. You're you're absolutely correct. And one of the big critiques that I think segues really well is the fact that Mace Windu decides to kill Palpatine at the end of Revenge of the Sith. But mm-hmm. I think people, I think people misinterpret that, and they really hone into those last few seconds of that engagement and not the large picture. The reality of the situation is that Mace Windu did go to the Chancellor's office with the intention of arresting the Chancellor, even though he was a Sith Lord. And even after the chan even after Palpatine cleaves through three of the most skilled Jedi masters and three of Mace Windu's brethren, when Windu defeats Palpatine, he goes to arrest him again. Uh, Even after the death of the Jedi, Mace Windu is still holding to the Jedi Order and how the Order itself is structured and how they handle things, even to the arrest of a Sith Lord. But it's only after Palpatine attempts to kill him a third time and manipulate Anakin even further with Force Lightning that in that moment, Mace Windu chooses the sanctity uh, of the Republic even above his stance as a Jedi which I think is interesting. He does something that many consider to be the un-Jedi-like path, which is to strike down the Sith Lord. But in that moment, yeah. Mace Windu striking down the Sith Lord, not out of adherence to the code and a Jedi's conduct, conduct, he's in a way, tragically, sacrificing his own morals for the protection of the Republic. Yeah, it's, it's very hypocritical and short-sighted of Anakin in that moment to tell him that it's not the Jedi way for him to strike down Palpatine. Um, of course, we know from the novel that the reason he says that is because 
uh, his murder of Count Dooku actually haunts him after that moment. And he keeps going back and forth whether that was the right thing to do. And so when he's faced with another chance to spare the life of a Sith Lord so that he can stand trial, his immediate thought was to rush to his defense against perhaps repeating the same mistake that Dooku made or that he made with Dooku. Um, That's really course, interesting. Yeah. I don't um, think uh, Windu would have any regrets whatsoever. I think no. that uh, his resolve would be so strong in conquering the dark side, not only within himself, but now the darkness that has infected and corroded the Republic itself. I don't think Windu would have any reservations. But it is interesting that the combination of things with Anakin's regret over the manner in which he killed Dooku. Maybe not so much that he killed Dooku, but the circumstances surrounding it. And he's right. projecting a lot of his own shortcomings as a Jedi onto Windu, who Windu has now almost put his Jedi way on the back burner, and he's doing everything he can in service of the Republic. Something very similar to what Anakin lies to himself and tricks to himself that he's doing. But obviously Anakin crosses lines that Windu never would, but they're so much more similar than uh, many would like to admit. And that's why they butt heads. I mean, sure. Execution certainly isn't the way of the Jedi. Um, and it never should. Well, I say it mostly never should be, um, <laughs> but there are circumstances where, uh, a Jedi has to act upon their instinct. They have to listen to the Force to understand what is going to be the right course of peace in that moment. And if that looks like removing darkness in the best way that they know how, that's just kind of how it has to be. And, you know, I definitely think that Mace was pushing himself a little too far in that instance because he was surrounded by the dark side in that moment. I mean, while this isn't something that's been... Uh, explicitly stated i like to think that because he had been fighting the avatar of the dark side with vapad and taking in all that dark side energy he was still sort of coming off of that in that moment and with the dark side surrounding him he kind of the only thing he could think to do was to just destroy it interesting i've seen a lot of people criticize Windu's adherence to the Jedi code ripping mm. away his humanity, uh, which I think is interesting yeah. that he sort of decides to embody the code rather than, you know, go into empathy like an individual like Qui-Gon or as we're seeing in the Acolyte Master Soul, uh, very right. empathetic individuals. But because Mace Windu follows the code line upon line, precept upon precept, it's just, you know, that is his life. That is who he is. You know, it's it's interesting. There's a lot of dialogue from non-Force sensitives, uh, especially clones, where they wonder if the rumors about the Jedi are true, that they're pretty much as unfeeling as droids, that they're just cold and won't allow themselves to feel emotions. And, you know, while that's clearly not the case, we have many instances of that, you know, even someone like Shock T, who may not be as compassionate as Plo Koon, she still has that, you know, motherly way about her to where she cares about the people around her. And many Jedi are like that. Um, Yoda, even when he's being strict, is like that. Um, I don't think Mace is cold. I think he puts his emotion, he represses his emotions more than most Jedi do, but only because of the immense amount of responsibility he has as the leader of the High Council and the figurehead of the Jedi Order right next to Yoda. I think something else a lot of people don't talk about is the sheer amount of stress and responsibility that Mace Windu has when we encounter him over the Clone Wars and over the prequels. The prequels, first off, there's a cloud that has been cast over the Force itself that mm -hmm. has directly affected the Jedi's ability to tap into not not just the force, but the light side. It has disrupted everything that they have held to for so long and everything Windu has held to for so long. Uh, and when we encounter him, he is a general in a war where previously he was born to be a religious leader, if you really want to break it down. And yeah. uh, this, the Clone Wars is a war of politics. It's not a war of religion. Um, and to have a religious warrior fight 
uh, in a war strictly for politics, you know, those two things don't mix very well. They're oil and water. So we're, we're looking at Mace Windu. Not only is his ability to touch the Force diminished, not only can they sense the dark side everywhere, not only is he a general in this war, but in a lot of ways, it hinges solely on his responsibility as the leader of the council. And if you watched our video uh, today, earlier that we posted, Mace Windu was the leader of the High Council before the Clone Wars broke out, not Yoda. And Mace mm -hmm. Windu goes to uh, he goes on the front lines of battle not because he has a love for combat but because that's where he feels like he's the ne most uh needed he does have a love for combat but he doesn't fight in the clone wars out of love and enjoyment but what that well, like says is he's willing anakin definitely does because anakin's dangerous like we love anakin <laughs> anakin's a good person yeah. Anakin loves his people, but Anakin is dangerous. Mace Windu fights because he has to. Anakin fights because he wants to. Anakin gets so dangerous right. in the Revenge of the Sith novelization that it's something that we've spoken about time and time again, that Anakin wants to be in war more than he wants yeah. the war to come to an end. There is a part of Anakin that was born to fight, um, and Anakin lets that dictate him. And there's a part of Windu that was born to fight but Windu does not let that control him whatsoever. It's super exciting that you bring this up because the way of Vopad to use the seventh form of lightsaber combat as a Jedi is to actually allow the thrill of battle and the eagerness to win and the excitement of combat to flow into your system. And uh, previously, before we described it as allowing you know, the Jedi to feel their emotions to give them power in in the seventh form uh, but it's really just the the thrill of the fight and Windu allows that to flow into him but then he pushes it back and that's pretty much how Vopad is created as he you know receives the darkness from his opponent and then pushes it back which is through those excited emotions and it's only because he has a mastery of those emotions that he's able to do that Unlike Anakin, who, if he used Vopad, he would go straight to the dark side. Yeah, Anakin is a slave to his emotions, and Windu is a master of his emotions, Word. which makes two of them, you know, appropriate foils for one another. Now, I don't want this video to come off as Mace Windu did everything perfectly. I don't think no. that's true, but I do think that he did far less wrong than what many fans levy his way. Um, just because somebody didn't do something or handle Anakin with, uh, you know, child, like, like handled Anakin as a child. Is that really the pitfall of Mace Windu or is that a pitfall of Anakin? You get what I'm getting at? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's an interesting case where Windu, much like Kiati Mundi, just adheres to the Jedi way a bit too much for his own good. If that makes sense. He does. He does. And just like in everyday life, there are people that you're going to get along with more naturally than others. This is not a case of like, Mace Windu should have been Anakin's master. I don't believe that would have worked whatsoever. No. I think they would have been at odds very quickly. Mm -hmm. But it is also to say, just because Mace Windu operates in a way that Anakin disagrees with doesn't make Mace Windu inherently wrong. Just like... The way Anakin conducts himself sometimes, even though Mace Windu disagrees with it, sometimes Anakin's right. And they just are two individuals that don't see eye to eye. One of them could have been the Grand Master and they were never seeing eye to eye. They're just too different. Their foundation on what they serve is too different. Uh, Mace Windu serves the system and through proxy, the system serves people. But Anakin serves people and hopes that through proxy, those people will serve the system. Beautifully said. So they just, they both have the same goal, tragically. Order, peace. And, and I'm talking about Anakin. I'm not talking about Vader. You know, Anakin mm -hmm. and Windu have the same goal. Peace in the Republic, prosperity. Um, but they just go about it in completely opposite ways. And if they had just found a way to unify together, Windu and Anakin would have been the key that would have destroyed and unearthed the Sith. I have no doubt about it. 
I I like that a lot. And you know, that's actually exemplified a lot during the early years of the Clone Wars. Um, there, of course, is like a mini arc in the Clone Wars show where we get an exclusive Mace and Anakin mission, uh, specifically when the young Boba Fett tried to make an attempt on Mace's life and it destroyed that Vendator class Star Destroyer. Um, they crash landed on Vancor, if you remember, and they were both mm-hmm. trapped under debris. And, you know, or, yeah, they were trapped under debris after uh, Boba Fett planted a bomb in Jango's helmet. And, you know, both Mace and Anakin were just trying to survive. And even though Mace doubted Anakin's faith in R2 to rescue them, they both ultimately made it out alive from that incident. And they gained a respect for each other. Yeah, I mean, they're both the the two greatest warriors of the Jedi Order, besides maybe not counting Plo Koon, Obi-Wan, and Yoda. But the last thing I want to touch on with Mace Windu is just how tragic of a character he really is. Um, A lot of people attribute the tragedy in Star Wars to like Maul or Vader, but I think Mace Windu's tragedy speaks to a really intimate, um, really heartbreaking truth, and that is that Palpatine uses his decision to kill him as a way to paint him as the enemy of the Republic, when in all actuality, Mace Windu was anything but. He was the greatest advocate of the Republic that was alive, full stop, full period, you know. But through Palpatine's machinations and his manipulation, he ends up taking the Republic's greatest warrior and turning him into the domino that knocks down the Republic entirely and twists and just destroys and erodes Mace Windu's reputation and who he is as a man. And that's just something that is so sad and something that a lot of people don't talk about. Yeah. And it's one of those things that isn't talked about much because we don't get to see it a lot on screen. Um, And I know we keep referencing the novelization, but it's just so important because we get so much more of Mace Windu in this book. Um, What we don't see is that, Mace becomes literally paranoid. Um, When he's talking to Obi-Wan, he tells him that they've discovered that Darth Sidious is real and he is, you know, in a high position in the Republic and they have tracked him down to Palpatine's entourage. They don't believe it's Palpatine, but they believe that Darth Sidious is hiding amongst him. And so, you know, they're still having to be clandestine about how they go about locating Sidious because they can't just start questioning everyone in the Senate. It'd cause a panic. But Obi-Wan, when Mace is telling him this, he says he notices that there's this wildness in Mace's eyes. Like he's just paranoid and he tells Obi-Wan how bad it's been on Coruscant that he can't tell who's the enemy. And it feels like the dark side is just all around him. And he's just breaking down and like snapping back to Yoda during meetings. And it's just bad. Yeah, that, that's, again, the pressures of the war and the pressures of the Force. Mace Windu is under more pressure than really anyone else besides Anakin and Yoda during the Clone Wars. It's his mm-hmm. responsibility to bring it to an end. And I think uh, in Revenge of the Sith, he senses that despite on the surface the Republic having the upper hand on the Separatists, Mace Windu knows that they're losing the war, which sparks that wildness in his eyes. The fact that... There's more going on than that Mace Windu knows it, and he can't attack this enemy because they haven't revealed themselves yet. So frustrating. Yeah, it is. Um, But, you know, kind of talking a little bit more about Mace Windu's uh, opinion towards Anakin, uh, we always get this sense that he just straight up doesn't like him. And I don't think that's ever been the case. He never said that he didn't like Anakin just at the very end, he said he didn't trust him. And that was only because Anakin was so close to the Chancellor. We talked before about how um, Windu doesn't like what the Senate is doing to the Republic, and he sees, you know, Chancellor Palpatine as someone who's dangerously power-hungry. And he senses that there's more to the Chancellor than meets the eye, but he just can't pinpoint exactly what. And it's upsetting how close Anakin is to him. The chosen one. I yeah. in my research in my research 
uh, preparing for this discussion, I found a quote that someone brought up about Mace Windu, and they said that he embodies this. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Mace Windu wants to make people make the right decisions, even though it's the hard decision. And even though for the time being, it may result in a more tumultuous universe, a more tumultuous Jedi Order, a more tumultuous Senate and Republic through overthrowing Palpatine in the moral light or doing things completely morally all the time. And even though instantly it may not lead towards the most comfortable road, in the end, it does eventually lean and bend towards justice, which makes Windu is the ultimate servant of justice for the Republic. Yeah, exactly. I think he was always trying to push Anakin in the direction of making the right choices. He just didn't go about it the right way. He treated Anakin like how one might treat any other Jedi Padawan, and he wouldn't, if not outright, refused to treat him any differently as the Chosen One and as someone who came into the Order as a uh, non-infant, much older, nine years old. Um, he doesn't take into account Anakin's emotions and is instead trying to push him in a emotionless way, which just doesn't work. But, you know, the um, uh, the intention is there. And also... It, it's not impossible for Anakin to earn Mace Windu's respect and trust. Windu no. even says as much in uh, to Anakin in Revenge of the Sith. But I think a good example of that would be, you know, Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, he doesn't trust Obi Wan to train Anakin. He, the two butt heads in in various comics and a little bit in the Phantom Menace. But by the end of the day, once Obi-Wan proves himself, Mace Windu has nothing but the highest of praise for Obi-Wan. And that is something that Anakin could have made. I don't think that he could have earned that respect from Windu. I don't think that the road to Windu's respect is an endless one. I just think it's a little bit more difficult than Anakin may have been used to or appreciated. But that doesn't mean that Mace Windu would never have opened up uh, I think that respect would have eventually been earned. But again, Anakin mm -hmm. made different decisions. I think um, it's interesting what you said about Mace and Obi-Wan uh, because their perspectives at one brief point actually flipped. Um, there was a deleted scene in Attack of the Clones that provides so much depth to Mace Windu and Anakin's silent you know, relationship. Um, Obi-Wan's kind of confiding in Mace and telling that he's concerned about Anakin protecting Senator Amidala. He says, I don't think we should have been assigned to this. Um, and he admits to Mace that he and Yoda were right all those years ago, that Anakin was too old to be trained because now he's become arrogant. And he even goes as far as telling Mace that Anakin has an emotional connection to Padme. But what's so interesting is Windu's reaction because he just kind of looks at Obi-Wan a little confused. And he says that if the prophecy is true and Anakin is the chosen one to bring balance, then Obi-Wan needs to have faith in his Padawan. He doesn't say anything more than that, but Obi-Wan, you know, bows and appreciates the advice. Um, but I just think that's so impactful is that he doesn't give him an I told you so. He says, no, no, just wait it out and have faith. Once they are on that path, once the Jedi Order has decided that Anakin needs to be trained, you know, that is what Mace Windu is in full support of. And, and it's unfortunate that a lot of the moments where Mace Windu shockingly comes to the defense of Anakin is in a lot of the supplementary material like comics and novels and deleted scenes where if mm -hmm. we actually got to see them on screen, our opinions on Windu uh, would be drastically different. But I'm going to go ahead and just give a brief summary conclusion. Yeah. I think Mace Windu is a character who the fans give an unnecessarily hard time. At the end of the day, <laughs> Mace Windu is the good guy. He is one yes. of the heroes of our story. Uh, and he wants what's best for the galaxy, where Palpatine wants the galaxy for himself. Windu is in service for the people. Um, he's not in service for himself personally. But, you know, he has to take control 
of things in the way that he believes are right. And that puts him at odds with people that disagree. But, you know, it's natural to disagree. The person at the end of the day that went overboard was not Mace Windu. It was Anakin. Anakin attacked a Jedi council member. He cut off Mace Windu's arm um, Mm -hmm. to save his friend and to do it to save his wife. So for reasons beyond the Republic, for selfish reasons, and Mace Windu... You know, in a lot of ways, it's good that he died before he saw what the galaxy had devolved into. Um, but he's one of the most tragic and misunderstood characters, and he's a character that I love. So, Mace Windu, my closing thoughts is that he is utterly selfless at the end of the day. He is a paladin of justice, and he's definitely just the ultimate Jedi uh, of the republic classic era for what that time period needed he was that ultimate jedi um and if they do bring him back i hope they don't but if they do they probably will (laughs) if they don't get that aspect of his character right then it will be a disaster because if they bring him back saying that he fell to the dark side or that he now has selfish ambitions or you know crazy radical goals like there's a way to do that right but he has to be still completely selfless and if he does have a uh, like a path of um, you know of radicalism, it definitely needs to almost go like a Saw Gerrera route, where he's just radicalized in his selflessness and his willingness to bring back order at whatever cost. Right. Well, guys, we would love to hear your thoughts on Mace Windu in the comments down below. Do you think that he's a character that a lot of fans unjustly uh, harp on? Is he one of your favorites? Or do you still stick with Anakin no matter what? Obviously, (laughs) this video isn't made to condemn Anakin. Things could have been handled differently on both sides. But at the end of the day, Mace Windu is a much more virtuous character than people give him credit for. Anyway, my friends, leave your thoughts on our discussion down below. What do you think about the character of Mace Windu? And what other longer form video discussions would you like to see in the future? Thank you again for the Archivist for joining us. And as always, my acolytes, may the force be with you.